1985, a small company called Ultimate Play the Game would impress Nintendo and form a company that would become one of the most beloved of the 90s, Rare. One of the earliest games they'd make in collaboration with Nintendo was a small game called Digger T-Rock, The Legend of the Lost City for the Nintendo Entertainment System. It's also available in the collection Rare Replay on Xbox One, which is how I played it for this video. How does this early effort reflect on what Rare would become? Was their first step a stumble or a stride? In Digger T Rock, The Legend of the Lost City, the titular character discovers a sign pointing to a lost city in a cave. In order to find it, he digs through eight caverns filled to the brim with deadly traps and monsters. It's an NES game. Their most intricate stories max out at like two pages. Don't know what else to fill into the story section. It's just an excuse for a cave exploring game. The goal of each level is simple. Somewhere in the cavern is a pillar. Standing on it lowers it down and opens a door somewhere in the area. The door will only remain open for 60 seconds, and Digger needs to navigate the maze-like caverns in order to escape before they close. If he fails, the pillar needs to be pressed again for another try. Between levels are short bonus levels. Collecting all 8 cups in these grants an extra life, but succeeding at that is much harder than it sounds. Each of the eight caverns has numerous obstacles that are cleared with a handful of tools. Each tool serves a small handful of purposes. The shovel is Digger's main tool. It serves as his primary weapon with a simple swing, but when paired with collectible pebbles, it can also toss a small projectile that bounces off the ground. In addition, it has some added utility, being able to dig into soft dirt to get around and tapping on ceilings, which causes drops of pebbles or power-up mushrooms. Rope ladders are pretty self-explanatory. They drop a ladder that can be used to climb deep down into holes. Dynamite blows up walls and can technically be used as a weapon, but its absurdly short fuse means using it recklessly is a good way to burn through lives, which speaking of, you only have three for the entire game. Jewels can be used to purchase the other three items in stores hidden in stages four and seven, but have the hidden property of distracting most T-Rexes. Power-up mushrooms can't be held in inventory, but refill a large chunk of health, cause temporary invincibility, allow Digger to punch through walls that normally require dynamite, and one-shot even the T-Rexes. Throughout the caves are numerous obstacles, usually in the form of pits. While there aren't any instant death pits per se, the fall damage is very severe, and with only three lives it's hard to take a chance. A variety of enemies appear, but unlike something like Mario or Sonic where enemies are relatively predictable and somewhat harmless, enemies in Dagger T Rock only come in shades of brutal. Moles are the least threatening, simply running back and forth, but they also spawn repeatedly. Mosquitoes are perhaps the most common enemy. They can fly, they chase Digger, and they have high DPS once they latch on. T-Rexes have a few variants, and they take a good few hits to defeat. Most T-Rexes can be frozen with jewels, rendering them sitting ducks, although the ones that spit eggs like a Yoshi in level 8 ignore this, but can be backed off with dynamite. If the eggs they spit are allowed to hatch, they become small flame-breathing dinosaurs that go down in one hit but can knock off a whole lot of health. Mudmen also hit hard, but can be frozen by smacking them. Hitting them in the face while frozen temporarily kills them, and there's a small window to do this right before they unfreeze. Appearing only in level 5, there's a ghost that drags Digger somewhere else on the map and causes huge fall damage when it drops him, and can also apparently cause a soft lock, which I had happen. But like T-Rexes, the ghosts apparently love jewels. Skeletons are fairly simple, just tossing bones and maybe as easy to deal with as the moles. There's also a random dragon in level 6 who launches fire, I'm not even sure why he just shows up like that. Lastly are cavemen, who appear in shopping levels and hit hard but can usually just be jumped over. On paper it sounds like a regular game, but one thing that's irregular is the control. Digger is a bitch to control, he seems to have a lot of slide to him, but unlike Mario where his slide makes him fun to control, Digger seems to magnetize to the next tile on top of having some slide. At any reasonable speed, Digger will just walk off cliffs and plunge to his death. The jump also seems to have this magnetic property that makes jumping very unreliable and uncomfortable. Another quirk of the controls is climbing and crawling. Getting anywhere near a ledge will cause Digger to attempt to climb it, even if it'd be far easier to jump. Climbing puts Digger into his crawl state, where his hitbox is longer, which is really frustrating when trying to dodge falling boulders. Even if it would be useful, it's impossible to manually enter a crawl, and the crawl lasts until up is pressed, slowing down movement speed and preventing jumping. Using the menu is also a little clunky, as it can only go through one item at a time and only in one direction, and immediately after using an item, it'll just reset to the shovel again. The game is also extremely punishing, even for an NES game. Three lives, no continues, and extra lives only for completing a challenging bonus game. The only way to restore health is through the power-up mushrooms, which are hidden in obscure and dangerous spots, and so on. Warps exist for the first three levels, hitting the first enemy in Cavern 1 before the second spawns to go to Cavern 2, jumping on a ladder without breaking falling floors in 2 to go to 3, and killing a mudman with a mushroom in 3 to go to 4. But that only goes so far. While I was able to get to Cavern 5, it's full of pits with huge drops that are nearly instant kill, and it doesn't get better from there.
There is something really rewarding in exploring, routing, and discovering secrets, like stumbling into mushrooms. But the enemies are so brutal, the layout's so treacherous, and the life system so frustrating that it's hard to justify trying to beat it the intended way. The rock trap in level 3 can smash through lives, and even knowing the pattern ahead of time, it feels tough to escape without taking at least one hit simply because of the janky hitboxes, especially when Digger tries to climb and lays himself down. Once the game hits the difficulty curve, it drives off that thing like a ramp. Rare Replay itself starts with unlimited lives on by default, and even with save states on limited lives, it's possible to get soft locked in at least caverns 5 and 8. I put in a solid attempt, but trying to figure out the maze of 5 with 3 lives or less, especially after dealing with the rock trap in cavern 3, is just too much. I was able to get through it all, but only by being a filthy cheater. The game is cruel and unforgiving and a real test of endurance. The sad part is, with better controls, it probably wouldn't be. Most of my deaths came from sliding off cliffs, having to slow down near enemies because of cliffs and getting two shotted, or other such cheap bullshit. Somewhere deep in here is a good game with fun exploration and secrets and big maze like levels, but it's so cruel and unforgiving that the good is going to be inaccessible to most players. Visually, the game is decent. The caves have a little bit of variance in design, and Digger's animations are fairly smooth. Most of the enemies don't get the same treatment, though. The real standout in the game's presentation is the soundtrack by Rare's legendary David Wise, which you can hear in the background here, with a short but memorable soundtrack that grows in intensity the closer Digger gets to the Lost City. Now, a very brief rundown of the game's levels. Cavern 1 is essentially a tutorial, although it does a fairly poor job at it. It has a few branching paths that lead to diamonds, but doesn't ask the player to do much beyond digging and running right. I think the simplicity of this level and the stress of the timer, which must be pressed to get to the explorable areas, strongly discourages players from learning about exploration and hitting ceilings for small rewards. Cavern 2 is still a fairly reasonable level, which requires more explanation, but some bullshit mosquito placements in the first T-Rex near the end more or less require finding a mushroom to keep healthy, which may throw new players off. Cavern 3's notable feature is the rock trap. Right at the end of the stage, Digger's locked in a room with falling rocks that come in a few patterns, perhaps three or four. It's very easy to game over here because the rocks don't stop coming, respawn and vulnerability doesn't protect against them, and Digger tries to climb everything, leading to a swift death. Cavern 4 is the first shopping area, one gem for eight of any of the other items, which is invaluable. Outside of being able to purchase items, the stage is basically a street shot. Cavern 5 is hell. The stage is massively vertical and falling anywhere is almost a sure death. In order to escape, three boulders need to be knocked down before the exit is accessible, and to get around, Digger needs to ride a moving platform that doesn't give a great idea of where to go considering the limited camera scope. Cavern 6 is the obligatory ice level. Slippery surfaces shoot Digger into walls and hitting them causes Digger to take damage. There's also spinning spike sticks that can be lowered with stones, but they seem kind of finicky and can be damage boosted through at the cost of health instead. Cavern 7 has more shopping, but only dynamite is available. The rest has passed through walls that need to be discovered, which are a new mechanic, but not completely unreasonable given the teleporters found in other levels. The final level, Cavern 8, is a nightmare. At least three dynamite and one jewel are necessary to get through it. The timer is strict and the enemies laid on thick. The first set of jumps is very strict and harsh given Digger's bad jumping, and if you don't go in knowing the T-Rex has ignored jewels in this level, you're going to be in trouble. But the game pulls a fast one, makes the only way to get past the last T-Rex a jewel. At the end, Digger finally reaches the Lost City with a promise to be continued. Every game I play seems to have these cliffhangers. Why? Obviously there was never a sequel, but I do think the base elements are fairly good, and if the control was patched up and the game was more forgiving, a sequel could have been pretty great. The Rare Replay version has a couple extra features. Cheats like Unlimited Lives, Rewind, and Unlimited Time to assist getting through this because Rare was aware how cruel it is. It has a few achievements, although they're pretty bland completion achievements and kill X enemies or get X point types. Lastly, there's a handful of snapshots, which are short NES remix style challenges. The first, Boulder Tactics, is collecting four cups in a bonus room, which is way easier than ever trying to get a bonus life off of them. The second, High Score Challenge, requires getting 2500 points in 60 seconds, which can be done simply by farming a few enemies. Rock Solid, the third snapshot, requires collecting all three gems in Cavern 1 and reaching the exit in 60 seconds. Given its straightforward nature and the ease of Cavern 1, it's pretty simple. Hit the Roof requires Digger to find five rocks in the ceiling. There's no time limit, but it's tedious to do. Untouchable, the final snapshot requires getting through Cavern 7 without taking damage. The cavemen in the level are usually pretty harmless and Digger started off with at least 10 ladders, which make it a pretty straightforward dash to the exit with liberal ladder use. None of the featurettes have anything about Digger T-Rock as far as I can tell, which makes sense because it lacks popularity. The game is still played at its original resolution, but has a very clean border on it using some of the game's art. Buried deep in the lower levels, Digger T-Rock The Legend of Lost City has the makings of a good game. 
The exploration is good and feels Zelda-like in its strange maze-like and secret-filled world. If the game was more polished and balanced, with the odd physics quirks worked out and the difficulty curve tuned to not turn into a huge wall early on, it might be fondly remembered as an early rare classic. A lot of games of the era had starting over as a punishment, for example, the original Super Mario Bros. But unlike that game, Digger T Rock punishes going fast, its warps are obscure, and losing rarely feels fun or fair. As it stands, it's an awkward feeling, sadistic game with some good ideas buried deep. 